Welcome back to another episode on the Aaron Dowdy podcast. My name is Aaron Dowdy, and uh, today we're going to be revisiting something we haven't talked about in a very long time. And what that thing is, is uh, something I used to share a lot on my channel. It has to do with understanding parallel realities and how we can easily shift to the parallel reality we want, knowing that the parallel reality we want, the best, most ideal version of us we can possibly imagine, it already exists. And all we have to do is shift our frequency. And as esoteric as this may sound, it is one of the most profound understandings and concepts that have completely transformed my own life is understanding parallel realities, understanding the complete able to just let go of the old identity, the old reality to then be in the new one. And I know it sounds esoteric in this episode. My goal is to help you maybe see it as something that's more probable, but also understanding that this is just a natural byproduct for the way reality works. This is what quantum physics is showing us. If you've seen the movie Interstellar with Christopher Nolan, uh, it really pointed at this idea and this philosophy, and um, it started to become more and more probable as time goes on. There's this one guy. His name is Thomas Campbell. He used to work with Robert Monroe. Robert Monroe wrote the book Out of the Body out of the body journeys or something like that. He's the guy that has something called the gateway experience, which are those um, tapes that I told you guys about. I am looking actually right at them right now. And there's like six different CDs. My grandpa told me to get them. They're like $500 to find them online because they're from the 80s. And this guy, Thomas Campbell, is a physicist who ended up working with this guy, Robert Monroe. And he talks a lot about something called simulation theory. And the idea is... It sounds kind of esoteric, but actually this guy's like a really smart guy and uh, he used to work with like NASA as a physicist and he's a big proponent of something called the simulation theory, which is all about that reality itself is a simulation. Now, when I say this, sometimes what happens is people get afraid and they think it means we live in a computer. It's not what I'm saying. Think of it as simulation as the understanding that we are a spiritual being having a temporary human experience. And we are using right now an avatar. This body that we have is called, it would be an avatar, just like you would have a game that you would play and you would have a character that you play in that game. And that avatar, that character would go around and do different things. It's just in our simulation, in our reality, which we know, by the way, 99.9% .9 of everything is empty space. That's what quantum physics does show us as well, is that everything is is filtered through our senses, what we can taste, touch, smell, hear, see. These are how we interpret our reality. This is the language we were given in a way that we were in this template reality able to use. And I think one of the reasons we come and we, we express ourselves through this avatar is so that we can have some beautiful experiences here. I think in higher levels of reality, in different reality systems, you could say, or different levels of consciousness, we, are, we have the choice of being physical or non-physical and we've transcended the need to use a body. But I think there's something beautiful about being in this avatar. We, we get to have and uh, eat amazing food. We get to be in Mother Earth, walk barefoot on grass, have sex. These are all things, or make love. Um, these are all things that feel amazing. In a way, maybe at higher levels of consciousness, we don't experience it quite the same way. And in this reality, we have this kind of like a this this reality system where or i guess you could say this planet where there's different you know there's so much contrast right there's so much contrast between i'm i live close you know right i'm in sedona close to the grand canyon you know it looks very different than that of like the beach in california or australia or many different places but there's so much contrast here that makes it beautiful now the idea of a simulation is that right now in the higher levels of consciousness we are, in a way, asleep, dreaming that this is who we are. And one thing that this guy Thomas Campbell did when he went out of the body, he, he, they learned and had a process for going outside of the body. Astral projection is what they call it. And what he would do is this guy would leave his body, 
and he's a physicist, by the way, he, he's very credible. I'm saying this because sometimes you say, oh, he's just like some loony guy that just like meditates and goes out of his body and shares what he learns. But he, he actually like scientifically documented all of this um, where it was like uh, he would do different things. He would go into different realities and experience this or that and um, learn from his higher self and stuff like that. And basically what he concluded is that we're eternal spiritual beings having temporary human experiences inside of this um, kind of like avatar body that we experience. And that was kind of like, you know, very profound insight. Now that's simulation and, uh, simulation theory, I guess it's called, it's called a theory of everything, a toe theory of everything. And, um, I think that we can have both the guy, Thomas Campbell, he doesn't really talk a lot about parallel realities. I think he does a little bit, but he more so talks about how just everything is consciousness. He also says that the main lesson to learn on earth is how to lower em entropy. Now, entropy is chaos. And basically, the spiritual way to say this <laughs> is lowering entropy is about increasing love, understanding that we're all connected. It is making things from complex to simple and taking out the chaos and and having more unity. And I think that that's what we're doing in this life right now. All these old structures are falling away so that we can then more so become aware of who we are and be in our own power. So simulation theory is more about that. But parallel reality is something I've studied a lot from Bashar. So some of you guys may know I'm a, uh, I've am been listening to Bashar for a long time. He's a channel kind of like Abraham Hicks. I've been doing it for 30 years. Some very consistent information. Um, I've been to a couple of events. I've had a private session. Um, and it's a lot of it is about parallel realities. But since I've been studying since 2012 um, or 2011, probably, it is, it's, it's something I actually use quite a bit of my life. But I don't talk about it as much because it is a little bit more esoteric. And it is uh, like when I'm sharing things on YouTube, I'm mindful of where people, I guess, what they would relate to. And parallel reality is actually... Something a lot of people, I think, you let me know. You can comment on, uh, I don't know, on this YouTube video. Uh, this is on my second YouTube channel as well, by the way. So if you guys are listening to the podcast, I do videos of these on my second YouTube channel. Um, but I know it's easier to listen to on the podcast. So whether you're on the podcast, just so you know, I do do videos of these. Sometimes I have people and it makes it a little more engaging when there's like I have uh, guests on. However, um, also if you're on the second channel, there's a podcast and you can just download and easily listen to these episodes. And there's... Like there's a whole bunch of episodes that aren't on the second YouTube channel because I only started doing this like a month or two ago or a couple months ago. So you can listen to those as well. Just go to Aaron Dowdy podcast, the Aaron Dowdy podcast on iTunes or Spotify. But this um, idea of parallel reality, I talked about the beginning on my YouTube channel and I'm just going to give it kind of a basis before I do that though. I've had a couple experiences in my own life of this whole parallel reality thing where there was like a break in continuity, like a strong break in continuity. And the idea behind parallel realities is that there's an infinite number of parallel realities that exist. And what we think of as movement, even if I were to move my hand right now, I just got a cold plunge, so my hands are kind of yellow, but <laughs> um, even as I move right now, I am shifting through different parallel realities. What we think of as movement is the shifting through different parallel realities. The idea is that you, this is from Bashar, you never actually change the parallel reality you're on. You never actually change the parallel reality you're on. They are static. What you are doing is because there's an infinite number of them, because everything exists here and now, you are shifting through them using movement. So the idea is that you're always shifting. You're always shifting. Even if you just might minutely move, there's many different variables. Think about it. There's millions of variables all in, in your reality. And if one thing moves, if a fly moves over there, a bird, I'm looking outside right now in Sedona, there's birds, there's hummingbirds everywhere. One little bird moves a little bit different. It's, it looks the same. No, it's this completely separate parallel reality because remember, it's just like if you were looking at a, a movie strip. So like if you had a, a movie, an old school movie strip where you, you take out the movie strip, this is the film strip analogy, and then you have these different frames. Now, if you were to speeding up this film strip, you would see it so fast that everything would be moving. Everything would be moving. But you know that if you were to take that film strip and stretch it out, there'd be this frame, this frame, this frame. Even if this frame and this frame look very similar, they're completely different frames. And they all exist now. 
even though the light of consciousness is only going through one frame at a time at a very fast speed so that you can see this continuity, it's about understanding that they all exist now. You have been the projectionist, but you haven't known it. You can switch around and put any frame that you want there, and it has to do with your energy, your vibration, and your consciousness, and your identity, something I talk a lot about. So when we talk about this, and we look at it, let me share with you my stories about this. So first off, this happened, um, I'll share with you, the, fir the, the first one that happened happened probably in 2010 or 11. I was driving home, or I was driving somewhere, I think I was driving to a store, and I was in the left lane on this street, I remember exactly where it is, it was in, it was in Vegas, it was off a street called Eastern, and... Uh, or Serene, actually the name of the street was Serene, Serene and Eastern. Anyways, I was going down the street and what happened is I got, I was in the left-hand lane and there was a median to my left. So I was in the left-hand lane, median to my left. There was this huge semi-truck that was right ahead of me in the lane, in the middle lane right next to me to my right. Now I was speeding up, I was going, going the speed limit, nothing crazy. And then what happened is the, the semi-truck starts to go into my lane. And I, there's a median on my other side, so I couldn't veer to the left. And what I, what I, I did not have time to break. Like, obviously, some people listen to me say, oh, you just braked and don't remember. No, literally, I was like right next to it. This thing starts coming in all of a sudden. So like what would happen is that car to my right, the big semi truck would have gone into my lane, not seen me at all, and just completely crushed me against this median. And what happened is all of a sudden I felt a big jolt, like a jolt almost, almost as if I got rear-ended, not painfully, but like a jolt. And then my, my, uh, I, I literally was like 20 feet behind the truck and the truck was in front of me. It was, it was crazy. I had no explanation for it. It was pretty much before my spiritual awakening. I was always kind of, you know, open and kind of sensitive and intuitive to certain things, but not like I was always, I've always been pretty good at reading people and certain intuitive things that I, that I've been able to do since I was young, but that was it. That was like incredible. I did not have any understanding. I felt like it was my higher self or I was shifted to a parallel like timeline that was very similar, but it kind of saved me from the pain, the death, the tragedy, or the, even if it wasn't going to be that bad, but just the, the, maybe it would have affected my life a certain way that my soul higher self didn't want me to experience. Now, here's another one. I was, uh, so after I went through my awakening, I went through a couple phases, um, had a girl, a couple different girlfriends throughout like two or three years. And then I moved back in with my dad and I was going from my dad's house to my, um, job working at Barney's New York. And that was like on the strip. So it was about a, a 15 minute, like a 20 minute drive. If you're driving a car, I got a moped. <laughs> I don't know why I did actually do know why I got a moped because I didn't have the money to have like a bigger car. And I was in a phase where I was like transitioning and it was like, Oh, this is actually, yeah, this is shortly after my spiritual awakening 2013. I was like, I got to get a job again. <laughs> Cause I went through like a, a really ungrounded phase where I was like, I didn't want to go have a 3d job. I didn't want to do any of these things. So I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to, um, um, I need to get a job again. So I, I applied to Barney's New York, got the job within literally one day and I was like, okay, I got a suit and stuff and then drive into work. And, uh, what I would do is I'd have my suit at the job at work in the locker room. And I would change when I got there because I didn't want to be all sweaty because it was so, so hot in Vegas. So what I did is I would drive this moped, which I got for like 600 bucks or something like that. And you don't have to have insurance on a moped too. So it was like easy for me. I was like, oh, this is the best of both worlds. So I would drive this moped and I was uh, turning off of this one street, making a left onto another street. Once again, in the left turn lane in a way, uh, or the left lane. And there's like this hill that goes down where the opposite side of traffic was coming and I was getting ready to make a left. And what happened is the light turned green for me to go. But for some reason, I could not put my foot or my hand on the thing to go. Like it literally would not like, I felt like this is weird. 
I just intuitively knew not to go, but I couldn't do it even if I wanted to. And there was this, and the reason being is there was this huge truck. It wasn't a semi truck. It was just like a big F-150 or something. And it was flying because there was a hill. It was like going really fast and it just completely ran the red light. I guarantee this one, if I would have gone and that car would have hit me, I'd have been done. No questions asked because that car was going so fast. It, it blatantly ran the red light. I mean, it like ran the red light like five or six seconds after it was already red. You know, it wasn't like it was like running yellow light. The green, I literally had to know to stop. So that was another one. And then after that, I went and I was like, what the hell just happened? Um, I've also had a, a couple other intuitive things that happened where I had a feeling that it was like spirit or my higher self telling me, giving me signs not to go on a certain path. For example, when I was working that old nine, you know, nine to five job at Nordstrom's before Barney's New York back in 2011, uh, 10 or 11, I ended up having a girlfriend, this girl that I worked with at Nordstrom's and this girl I started dating and we went out a couple times and she lived in like Summerlin. I lived in, in uh, Henderson. It was like 20, it's like a 35 minute drive just to see her. And I was driving to work one day and I was texting her and thinking about her. I was like, Oh, I was texting her while driving, which is not safe. And I got punished for that. Basically stop, go, stop, go, stop, go. And then I didn't, I was texting and while I was texting her, I rear-ended this car in front of me, which then rear-ended the, rear the car in front of it. And when that happened, um, it was just, it was, it wasn't actually that bad. It was just like insurance took care of it, but it was like, you know, I was like, okay, can never text and drive again. Got the lesson there. But the other part of this is I didn't have a car for like a month and a half while living at my dad's 35 minutes away from this chick. I knew intuitively it was like spirit telling me, hey, this isn't, like maybe you're not meant to like date this person. Um, and then what happened is I ended up, I ended up pushing through that because of the ego. <laughs> I ended up dating for like a year. And then it got to a point to where spirit really gave me a uh, sign. And basically what happened is this girl and I, we were uh, living together in a house and we had a, a, uh, she had two pit bulls and we had a house inspection. You know, it's so hard to get a house if you have pit bulls. So what we did is, um, we took we like said that we we had one dog that wasn't a pit bull, and we just kind of claimed that dog. And what happened was we we had an inspection, and she's like, okay, take the dogs. To, you know, let's how about because she was on the lease. I forget what it was, but she was on the lease, so it's her responsibility to be there for the inspection. And she said, hey, just take the dogs to this park. And I was like, yo, I don't feel comfortable with the dogs because there's one of her dogs that really only listened to her. And I was like, I don't feel comfortable doing that. And then what happened is um, I ended up going because we had to get that house inspection. Those dogs kind of like got tangled up with these leads, which are different than leashes because they can get out. And the dogs got out. And because of my fear that I was feeling too, they ended up like rushing and then like attacking this other dog. And it was like this real traumatic experience where then I was like trying to like, draw their their mouths open from killing this little like kookapoo dog or something like that it was a real traumatic experience and um and it was like si there, there's always signs that i was giving to like get out of that relationship but this planted a seed to where she then resented me because her dogs got put in a shelter this is interesting you guys might find this interesting this is what happened so first off the dog that kookapoo actually lived it missed an eye one of its eyes was gone but it lived and it was very traumatic for me. I ended up, um, I still have a scar on my middle finger where it like sliced it open and I had to go to the hospital and um, like get transported. The only time I've ever been in the ambulance and that was like, it was a lot of adrenaline. I remember the adrenaline kind of. Um, and from that point though, she kind of resented me for that because I, um, I, you, those were her babies. Those were her dogs. You know what I mean? And from my perspective, I was like, hey, I told you that I could, I did not feel comfortable like being because it was three dogs that I had to like watch at the park with leads, not leashes. And the leads kind of fall off easily when you have three of them walking around. And it was just an interesting thing. However, what ended up happening is after I, uh, they got the dogs, you know, the dogs got taken away and put in a shelter, which was like horrible, by the way, the shelters and stuff like the, they, they're in this little box and they, they turned into little, like little barbarian animals because of the way they treat them there. And we had a fight to get the dogs back. 
and we had to go to court and stuff. It was like super interesting. Um, and here's the interesting thing. Once I made the choice and once we made the choice to like go different paths, cause it, it planted a seed of kind of like resentment and it, it just started to fall apart from there on out. Once we made the choice and I actually broke up, moved, like, I think I moved back to my mom for a while and then moved in with friends after that. But once I did that, my mom pulled some strings and got, because she knew some people in the animal shelter, I forget. My mom's very crafty with leveraging and stuff. Um, she got the, she got her dogs back. My ex got her dogs back, like, literally the week that we broke up. It was almost like compassion towards those dogs because I feel like those dogs in a way helped me detach from this chick, this, this girlfriend. So it's, it's kind of interesting, but I feel like it was like there's different parallel realities that exist and our higher self is always guiding us to a more optimal one, but sometimes our ego holds on to certain perspectives. So I know I just talked a lot about a tangent. I hope you guys don't mind, but that was, I believe that this is all correlated with parallel realities because there's an infinite number of parallel realities that exist and sometimes our higher self will give us signs as to which one is most optimal, which one's maybe a little bit off the path in a way, but of course it's not off the path. It's like part of it maybe because I learned from it. I learned to take and trust that intuition, trust that sign. I didn't get the first lesson with the whole car thing and not having a car for a month and a half. So this is like, you would like look at that and be like, huh, this looks, this looks like uh, maybe the universe is showing me something else. And then again, with the dog situation, it was like, um, and she got the dogs back literally the week that we, I moved out and it was like super reminiscent and obvious that, uh, that may have something to do with it, you know, um, that energy. So one of the things that is, that is directly tied to different parallel realities is once you know that all the different parallel realities exist, already exist, it makes it easier for you to know and you to imagine the ideal reality of the kind of person you prefer to be. To be means identity. So we are always making choices about who we are. And when I look at my own life and the things that have shifted my own life the most, it was at a point when I made a new choice about who I am and what I'm committing to. That makes every, that makes all the difference. This is why diets don't work. When people do a diet, they're seeing themselves as the old identity and they're doing a diet for a period of time. If somebody wants to make a real life changing decision, they must see themselves to be the new identity of them not being fat, losing weight them being at the ideal weight they want to be at, which means then they link up their thoughts, their feelings, their emotions to that reality, to them being that, to, to them eating healthy, to them going to the gym, to them uh, walking every day for 20 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever. That's just part of their identity. It's not something they do to get a certain result. That's a means to an end. You do it in the end of itself because it's part of your identity. Now, when I look, um, I think we're always in, I say parallel reality with higher self as well a lot because I think our higher self is guiding us through these different parallel realities that exist. And uh, I remember the biggest one is the one that I've shared with you guys like a thousand times that you guys are probably like, dude, he's going to share this story again. Oh my gosh. Like, I've heard it so many times. Just the one where I was walking around. I know I'm telling the story again. Walking around, going to my at my dad's house, and then realize if I make a video every single day for a year, my life will transform. I feel like that was a message from my higher self, telling me, "Hey, if you do this, you are going to become that new identity, and you're going to be on a more optimal timeline." So that was something that once I committed to, within three weeks, you know, making daily videos while working a nine to five job, very busy. But after about three weeks, one, it changed my identity. I started to see myself as somebody that can do something I set my mind to, and that follow through was huge for my identity. Instead of just thinking about it like, think a better thought, just think on my couch, you know, nothing wrong with that. But I'm just saying that was my mentality before. Once I started taking action and being that identity, not just thinking about it, but being it, that's when my life changed in a, in a, in a massive way. So sometimes the thing you might need to hear is to take massive action as that identity. And it's not something that a lot of spiritual people always want to hear because it's like, well, what about the feeling? Does it feel right? Well, it might not feel right at first because it's not comfortable. That's all. Anything that is familiar is comfortable. If it's not familiar because you're doing something new, it might, I'm feeling a little resistance. Should I do that? It feels a little vibrational. No, it's about understanding that that's a part of the process. It wasn't comfortable for me to make videos at first on YouTube. I was very cringy. 
If you go back and look at some of my older YouTube videos, they are cringy AF. Cringy as fuck. Go look at them. Or like you go on YouTube and then just reorder them by date and you'll see what I mean. You just have to start though. You just have to start and make a new choice about who you are. That's what I did and within a very short period of time, within a couple months, I was able to put in my uh, two weeks at that job that I had selling women's shoes. And it was like one of the most exhilarating things. I'm like, I'm going to buy my time back, be able to do what I want, what I want. It was incredible. And guess what? That completely changed my life. I made a new choice about who I am. And once you commit to that vision and you, you don't really give it an option for you to fall off of it, that becomes your reality. Now think of it like this. Which reality you are in will depend upon your belief about who you are. Your beliefs create your reality. So really, when we talk about beliefs create our reality and parallel reality, I believe they're intimately connected because the beliefs you have are opening up different probability, uh, different probabilities that you can see and based that are equal to those belief systems and those are the ones you opening up. So if you want to sw switch the parallel realities you experience, you have to shift your belief system, your beliefs about who you are about what you're capable of, about what you're worthy of. Are things hard or things easy? I used to believe I had to work hard to be successful. Now I realize I just have to work smart. And maybe even that's, a, maybe I could just work dumb. <laughs> but that's a limiting belief that I need to work smart. It's all beliefs. What do you believe to be true about yourself? What do you believe about love? Because those are the parallel realities that are going to be equal to your belief system. If you believe that you're not worthy of a certain type of love or you believe that it has to be this way, then you'll trap yourself almost in that those parallel realities. become. Remember, there's an infinite number of them. Depends on your vibration as which ones you shift to. This is why what I say is the most powerful thing is alignment. Alignment, you being in the highest frequency possible, the way you get to the highest frequency possible is you do what you are passionate about. When you are doing what you're passionate about, you're in a high vibrational energy, and what happens is you open up different parallel reality timelines that are equal to the vibration you are putting out. And if you're passionate, you're going to get more and more and more and more and more and more of a reflection of that passion. It's almost like a, a trail that just like starts, it's almost like a little breadcrumb trail that just leads you to more and more magical places if you just follow the trail. And you follow the trail by following your passion. Think about it. Your higher self is giving you a signal. So what Bashar talks a lot about, giving you a signal of what your passion is. When you're doing what you're passionate about, you feel high vibrational. And when you follow that, it just keeps leading you to the next best thing. And maybe the passion changes. But as it changes, you're, you're opening up new probabilities. You're going on this ecstatic timeline. I remember I had a reading with Bashar recently, and I was talking to him. I said, for example, what did I do last night while I was asleep? Because when we go to sleep, we're not just in the astral realms. We're also awake at higher levels of consciousness. Our avatar, simulation-wise, is asleep. And what we are doing is we are reconnecting to source, which is who we naturally are. Because one of the things that makes this virtual reality or simulation, one thing that makes this, and yet another word for simulation and virtual reality are kind of similar in my book, but is you forget who you are when you come here. You forget that you are an eternal spiritual being having a temporary human experience, and part of the process is waking up to who you really are. And until you do that, it's like everything is fixed. This just happens. My beliefs are this. This is what I learned growing up. Everything is fixed. But when you realize everything is in a constant flow, all you got to do is let go and realize everything's flexible. Then you start to create greater degree of change in your life. But what I asked Bashar is I said, what did I do last night when I was asleep? He said, you were doing a number of things. One of the things you were doing is you were looking at different probabilities for what we would talk about in today's session. So in the session, because I was planning and thinking about that session for a while, talking to Bashar, I was planning out different probabilities of what we would talk about in the session that would then affect my life. When we are asleep at night, what I believe we are doing is looking at different parallel reality timelines and kind of choosing the most optimal ones, depending on our vibration. We're in a way choosing certain appointments that we're going to have. And these appointments that we have are going to then affect our life in different ways. I believe a lot of the people we meet in our life are our soul contracts, people we meet for a period of time maybe for long periods of time, maybe for short, but with a certain purpose, us learning something about who we are. So there's an infinite number of parallel realities that exist. If you want to experience the one you want, it's all about alignment, alignment to your heart, alignment to your passion. 
and really getting inside of your own beliefs about your identity. Who do you believe you are? When I became the full-time YouTuber, I saw myself as a YouTuber. Then I made the videos every single day. I didn't like wait till I made videos for like a year and then say, okay, now I'm a YouTuber. I was the identity from the moment I started. And the thing that then changed as well is then I'm now changing it into a new level. To now, now live events. It's a new identity. It's a new reality. I'm literally using your imagination. What you can do is you can imagine these ideal versions of you and then you could just decide that right now that's who you are. Knowing that everything is always changing anyways. Change is the only constant in the universe. You can create a greater degree of change in the world by just simply making a new choice about who you are. And using imagination, you can imagine, because the parallel reality already exists where Aaron, the, the version of Aaron that I want to be is like traveling, doing live events, even with the restrictions right now, there's like different ways to go. Like there's a version of Aaron that's figured that out. There's also a version of Aaron where this pandemic stuff didn't actually happen the way that it's happening right now. There's an infinite number of them. Now, the one that you will experience will depend upon the probability of your vibration, your energy, and your belief system. And we did make an agreement as well for all of us collectively to be here. So there is a certain reality template bubble, you could say. Because if we were like, oh, well, that means I can just fly if I believe I can fly. Well, we did have a certain template level reality. Thomas Campbell kind of talks about this. Temple, uh, template level reality that we agreed to. And that's like some of the laws that we have here. Laws of physics, the laws of, you know, gravity, stuff like that. You know, it's, I could just believe, oh, I could fly, but the belief may not be enough because it negates. And even then there are saints and enlightened masters. If you've ever read the book autobiography of a yogi that could literally defy the levels of gravity by levitation. Ones that there was uh, gurus that just never slept. There was guru that never ate, but yet was 300 pounds. These are very interesting plays, but that's because when you transcend the game itself, then you kind of have cheat codes. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that you become enlightened. It's like you have cheat codes for different aspects of life. You could just do shit you want to do because the laws of gravity and stuff, you see it as an illusion. It doesn't actually have power over you. But the, the point is just knowing that this is a reality system. This is a virtual reality we live in. We are eternal spiritual beings having a temporary human experience. We forgot we live in this virtual reality. Therefore, we uh, identify with our avatar. think this is who we are. We carry around a whole bunch of pain over our past. And then we want to create what we want, but we think we're fixed and that we can't change. Everything is flexible. Everything is constantly in flux. All we have to do is make a new choice about who we are. And as we make a new choice about who we are, we begin to experience a whole new reality. So a lot of this is just about our choices. It's our choices based on our identity. How do we view ourselves? And what role are we playing? It's interesting. I was thinking about this. Um, it's the role, really. If you, there's a study on, on alpha male, beta male tendencies within a chimpanzee tribe. And what happens is the alpha male always has the most te testosterone. And there's a whole bunch of little beta male chimpanzees like jumping around. <laughs> and what happens is if the alpha male gets taken out, the leader chimpanzee monkey gets taken out, the beta male, one of the beta males steps up and then becomes the alpha. Within a day, that beta male then is creating more testosterone because the role has changed then it's like there's a reason for that one to lead. To lead and then to do, you know, and to lead the tribe and all that stuff. So it's interesting because it just takes a day. Literally one day, more testosterone, more leadership. And then Mr. Boss Man Chimpanzee. What if in our own life we can make a new choice about who we are instantaneously and then that's who we decide we, we are? We don't need a tribe or, you know, to, to, in order to make that choice about ourselves. That's what I believe we can do. We are free in this life to choose who we are. And once we make a new choice about who we are, if we stay consistent to that, our life will change in a very powerful way. That's what I did with YouTube. That's what I'm doing now with live events. That's what I've seen many people do. That you make a new choice about who you are and that changes everything. And, it, and if you think about it, there's you also use imagination to connect to these different parallel realities. So imagine the future version of you that's killing the game, doing what you love for a living, being the ideal identity that you prefer to be. 
And then as you imagine that version of you, what you can do is then just simply decide that's who you are now. When you go to bed at night, feel the emotions. Feel it as if that is you. Knowing when you wake up, that is who you're going to be, who you prefer to be. When you wake up in the morning, feel gratitude for something in your life and then feel gratitude that that's who you prefer to be now. And that's why I say do one thing every day that wires in that identity. That's why I make videos every single day. I make content almost every single day. I love doing it, but it wires in my identity. And what you can do is look and imagine in your vision, in your imagination, that ideal version of you, how you think, act, and feel, and just decide that that is who you are now. That is your new identity. There is no going back. I have a meditation on YouTube, which is like, uh, what is it? It's this meditation will shift you to a parallel reality in parentheses, no going back. It has almost a million views. The testimonies of what people say is incredible. I'll link that below. It, it, people literally feel like they're in a completely new reality after that meditation. Why? Because they've given themselves permission. Meditation has the power to loosen up our old identity and to let us believe in a new reality. And once we do, guess what? We experience a new reality. This is how I've used it. No going back. When Tony Robbins says, burn the bridges, have something you're, you're intended on and then go for it and then burn the bridges. It means don't, uh, uh, or burn the boats, burn the boats, burn the boats. Cause then the boats, if you burn, the, if you get to an Island and you have to conquer it and you burn the boats, there's no going back. All you have to do is make a new choice about who you are and then don't go back. That's it. It's just a choice. Meditation is a powerful way to do that. That's why that meditation I think did so well. So, um, this is something that I also talk a lot about in something called the shift experience. If you guys haven't heard about the shift experience, this is the step-by-step -step process for shifting your life into a new reality. It's letting go of the old identity to why you're in the new identity and then having meditation experiences that literally shift you there instantly. And the meditations I have are the most powerful meditations I've ever created with step-by-step -step videos that show you how to do this with guidance throughout the process, all you got to do is go to aarondowdy.com slash the shift experience, or actually, you know, you just go to the shift experience.com or actually, you know what you could do to go straight to the page. It's like for, a, that's for like a, a webinar that shows you more so how to do it. It's like a training, but if you don't want to go through that whole webinar, just go to Aaron Dowdy, A A R O N D O U G H T Y dot com forward slash shift s h i f t one two three shift one two three if you go to shift one two three it'll be very easy for you to be that new identity that's the shift experience that's where i teach all of this process how to go through this this is like the um some of the most powerful information that i've learned so if that resonates with you go to aaron forward slash shift one two three and you can check that out other than that i uh Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you guys want me to talk more about parallel realities, could you do me a favor? Could you maybe share this on Instagram, IG stories, and then tag me and I'll be resharing them. But also it'll let me know in the comments what you thought of this episode or not in the comments. Yeah, the comments if it's the YouTube video, but let me know on that Instagram story what you thought so I can see it. I'll be going through when this video comes out, this episode comes out, and it'll let me know if you guys want me to keep doing more parallel reality videos. So remember to shift to the parallel reality you want permanently. All you got to do is make a new choice about who you are. Make a new choice about who you are. And once you make that choice, guess what? That's it. You make the new choice. That's who you are. There's no going back. You just have to stick to it. You have to commit to it 100%. If you, connect, if you, if you commit to it 90%, it's not enough. I couldn't just like put one foot in the door of making videos on YouTube and then one foot in the door of working that nine to five job. No, I went all in. I literally was like making videos as if I was a full-time YouTuber. That's when the reality changes. It's not that you have to prove it to the universe that you want it that bad, but it's when you're in the vibration of being that version of you, you will then get the reflection that fully, if you fully support that vision, that vision will fully support you. That's something to remember. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Let me know what you think and I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Peace, much love and namaste.